so let us continue what i was uh, saying is that this is simple that gc is equal to k1 c squared upon e but the value right the value don't write in mega pascal and so on don't write in pascal meter write in joule per square meter because by definition this is the driving force or the energy required to crack further so this is a specific energy this is energy per unit surface area so joule per square meter okay now the next thing you have the equation delta delta c delta is ctod and c is critical so critical value of delta ctod c delta c is 4 upon pi g upon sigma y s this equation is again given right so it is there you just have to find this equation because the critical energy release rate and the critical ctod right so, uh, so this is there now again because yield strength is given and gc critical you have just found so if you put the gc value here then this will be critical so you just plug in those values and you get the answer and then you again if you have all the answers right i mean don't don't use wrong things and so on right if it is kilojoule then this is 10 raised to 3 if it is mega then it's 10 raised to 6 so you get 3.075 into 10 raised to minus 5 meter my calculation roughly now generally now generally this is the ctod right this is the crack tip opening so don't you don't don't leave this is the correct answer don't leave it in 10 raised to minus 5 meter change it to millimeter 0 0.031 millimeter now it means something right so though the value here is right there is nothing wrong in the value but engineers when they talk to each other do not say it is 3 into 10 raised to minus 5 meter they say it is 0 0.03 millimeter they say it is 0 0.03 millimeter isn't it or 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 they say it is 31 micrometer right 1 2 3 0 0.031 millimeter or 31 micrometer so please you can leave the answer in whatever calculation you did but when you talk to engineers you talk like engineers so i sometimes give a small pointers of a minus half here that your answer is right but don't leave the value as a 10 to minus 5 meter that does not mean anything you cannot relate to it but if it is in millimeters or microns then you can relate to it for the third part of the solution third part of the solution there you need this there you need this so you see delta is equal to dn j upon sigma naught this equation is here under plane stress under plane stress so if it is given in the question that it is plane stress then you it is okay otherwise you say that i am assuming plane stress and below this graph if the value of alpha is equal to 1 is given in the title of the graph and in the question also alpha is equal to 1 then okay right so if in the question it is given that it is under plane stress and that alpha is equal to 1 then you can directly start solving but if those two things are not given and you are still going to use this graph then say that i am assuming that alpha is equal to 1 and i am assuming that it is under plane stress and then solve it isn't it so this is very critical that if in the statement of the problem it is given plane stress and alpha is equal to 1 then you directly start solving otherwise you write that in your assumption so now you want this 1 upon n and you want this sigma naught upon e if you have these two things then you can read the dn from here right so sigma naught is equal to sigma yield stress it is given that assume that the reference stress is the yield stress so this is given therefore sigma naught upon e here is actually sigma y upon e right because you are assuming that your reference state is this one so put the value of sigma y as put the value of e you get 0 0.0024 0 0.0024 here it is 0 0.001 0 0.002 0 0.004 so the closest graph 0 0.0024 is for the second graph of 0 0.02 right this this second graph second graph not first from the bottom second from the bottom right so this is important that uh, sigma naught is yield strength 
and sigma naught upon e is 0 0.0024 which is closest to the second from the top uh, bottom sorry okay and n is given to be 4 so 1 upon n is 0.25 so if this is 0 0.2 and this is 0 0.3 then make it exactly in the center so that is why i showed you a large picture of this graph so if you enlarge this graph for the whole page size then this half exactly half here and exactly hitting here with this the second graph and then reading from here so if it is large enough then you will see that exactly in the middle exactly in the middle is 0.3 this is 0.2 this is 0.4 exactly in the middle is 0.3 right so i am taking the value to be roughly 0.32 i am taking it to be 0.32 you can take some value close to it but if you are taking a value of 0.3 it is okay if you are taking a value of 0.4 you are wrong i should deduct minus half or one from your solution right because then that is too far off there is no way that you can draw a line which is midway between these two points hit the second graph and draw a horizontal line and cut it at 0.4 no way 0.3 okay right so you have 0 0.32 0 0.3 0 0.28 something but you can't have 0.4 so dn is 0 0.32 but explain this in your solution explain plane stress alpha is equal to 1 reference stress to be yield strength and then find sigma naught upon e to be this and find 1 upon n to be this and say using this value and the graph i find out from the figure and write the figure number that this figure in the book or something and then there is no no make issue then you have 0.32 and then you have the equation so j is equal to delta into sigma naught upon dn right so j is equal to 1 upon d8 sigma naught delta and this sigma naught is already taken to be the yield step so if it is 0 0.32 then 1, the, 1 upon 0 0.32 sigma naught is yield step so 500 into 10 to 6 the delta the delta that you found out from here the delta that you found out from here so 3.075 into 10 to minus 5 the more accurate value and you will find that 48.05 again it is kilojoule so 48.5 into 10 to 3 joule per square meter joule per square meter right j is the same thing as g j is the same thing as g right so it is energy per unit area so it is joule per square meter okay so you see uh, we we are solving this together with you many of you may have solved it exactly correctly some of you may have missed something some of you unfortunately like you do in your lab experiments that one person is writing the lab report the rest of the three are not participating uh, some of you now the villa when you are doing the homeworks and so on in other courses somebody has done the homework you have just copied the homework and submitted it without the understanding i have no problem mentally with copying though it is bad but the my main problem is that you see if you copy from somebody else's solution try to understand every step so that you know the science the physics the math behind it if you don't know it then okay in that homework in that quiz you have got a few marks but when i ask you some question in a later quiz or in a later exam where your understanding of the subject was required then copying does not help so first of all copying is ethically wrong you should do it yourself secondly if you do something that is ethically wrong but unless make it count right uh, at least sorry make it count and so on right so uh, hopefully uh, uh, these uh, few slides of solutions and so on if you really go through the solutions with me as i am trying to explain uh, then uh, you will improve the understanding of the course let me uh, just leave you with the uh, uh, a small uh, more enjoyable moment uh, um, a man was uh, in his office and he got too tired and so on with meetings and work and so on so he said that for a couple of minutes i will relax so he made a call and said hello dar darling how are you and then he got the answer what you are in such a good mood you are calling me darling and what happened to the fight in the morning when you left for office 
He suddenly closed the phone and said, my goodness, I called my wife. Joke is over. So that is it. All the best for the final exam, inshallah. And uh, uh, hopefully you have uh, enjoyed the course. Hopefully you have learned something. Hopefully you feel that it was a worthwhile elective course. Unfortunately, being uh, totally online, we uh, can't do much, isn't it? Uh, in, in, in the way of direct interaction with you, even though we had some online sessions where you could ask the questions, but it would have been much more rewarding and fruitful and interactive if you were in the class with me. Uh, but uh, whatever the circumstances, uh, engineering students know the term called optimization, right? You minimize or maximize what you want to. Uh, if it is cost, you minimize it. If it is benefit, you maximize it. But there are certain constraints, certain constraints, certain limitations on the solutions. So this time, the constraints were that because of the COVID and so on, uh, all the things are being online and we don't have the direct interactive sessions as much as we would like to have uh, and so forth. And you do not have access to the labs and you cannot do experiments and so forth. But with these constraints, we optimize. We try to maximize the benefit from the course. So from my side, I try to do that as much as I can. And hopefully, uh, those of you who uh, tried together with me feel that yes, you have done something worthwhile. And inshallah, this will help you out and so on. Uh, so please, from now until the final exam, if you have any questions and so forth, we will not have any online sessions. Uh, you can contact me on email or something. And uh, I'll try to help you as much as I can. All the best for your final exams in this course, for all your final exams, for your whole degree and for your rest of the life, inshallah. Ma'as salama.